Hey guys, we are back with the screen team and we are here doing some kind of scary movies for this edition of the screen team. And um, it's interesting. We've got several different reviewers on this show. They've all got, they've got their specialities. We've got people like Guy and Tracy and Sabrina. They are fans of the horror film. They love the horror film. We have other folks on this panel that don't like horror films. One of them is next to me right now, Stacey Anderson. But, and this is very, very odd. I, I want her to explain this for me. Um, she hates horror films, despises them. But yet, we're getting ready to review probably the scariest movie of all time with Miss Stacey Anderson. First off, Stacey, I think you have a lot of explaining to do here. What's what's the deal here? Okay, well, you know, I'm married to Doug, and he is a horror junkie as well. Correct. So one night we're sitting there, and I am on my computer just writing away, and I know, look up and notice he's got the exorcist on. Well, I, I can manage to tune one <laughs> thing out while doing something else. But then, like, I did find myself kind of watching this, and I don't know if it's because, A, I was doing two things at once mm -hmm. b the lights were on or c maybe i've just read so much and heard so much about it i kind of knew what was going to happen mm -hmm. but there i was watching that pea soup fly across <laughs> the room so i want to get your perspective out of this um obviously you're not a fan of horror films and you're watching which a lot of critics a lot of fans think is probably one of the scariest movies of all time you being a uh, an older older woman you know yeah. a lot of these people saw it when they were kids so is does this movie still stand up does it still hold up is it still scary even though you are an adult i can see where it could be really scary to some people the, my main aversion to horror movies is the the bad guy mm -hmm. like and the music and not knowing who's under there and just all that you know doug always says how can you watch all these bloody shows on tv like surgeries and stuff like that right. and not get freaked out now i say well it's because i know who's behind the mask right um but this one while it's scary mm -hmm. there's just something about it that didn't i mean i had, didn't even think twice about going outside after after i watched it i don't i don't know i mean i guess if if somebody in my house started levitating, then <laughs> <laughs> I might think twice about how scary it is. But I didn't really, it didn't give me nightmares. I didn't have to pull my, I didn't have to cover my eyes or mm -hmm. anything like that. So, I mean, I guess it's scary in a way, but it's not, it's not Michael Myers and Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees kind of scary to me. So that stuff scares you more than, more than this yeah. one did. Plus, Doug makes me watch a lot of stuff where people get hacked up in the woods, and that's where I like to spend a lot of my free time. So then I get real nervous about it. So I have to stay away from stuff that happens in situations I might be in. Now, I could be mentioning this wrong, and I apologize for that if I am, but um, I think this exorcist story is based on a true story. And I think there's a couple of different versions that it's it's based on, but one of them is based on a situation of an exorcism in St. Louis. Right. Um, so if that doesn't scare you... It should now, man. That's, I mean, well, that's... that was like, what, 40 something years ago. Yeah. They got medicine for that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, guess they do, man. I really, guess if do. you think about some of the stuff they show on TV, like, this is, this is nothing. But now, would I watch it at night with all the lights off, mm -hmm. with only focusing on that? Mm -hmm. Might be a little bit bothersome for me, but. Yeah. I, I haven't seen this movie probably in 10, 15 years. I saw it, and I was scared, and I think I'm, I'm good. I'm mm -hmm. good, man. Um, now, I did, um, I think it was my dad's cousin when I had tagged it on Facebook. He said, I saw it once, never going to see it again. Yeah. You know, and he, he's older. He's seen some stuff, and if that, you know. Yeah. Um, I got a story to tell of, of Sabrina. Sabrina saw this movie, and uh, she saw it when she was... 12, 13 years old, the same age as Linda Blair's character in this film. So she watched it, but she watched it by herself without anybody else knowing. So she watched it uh -oh. and she wasn't able to go to sleep for like a week and a half. She was, people were like, what's wrong with her? Why, <laughs> why is she acting all, it was because she was sleep deprived, man. She was scared to go to sleep. And, um, I just, <laughs> it's just amazing <laughs> what this, Sabrina. what this movie can do to you. My dad, my dad's not a fan <laughs> of horror films, but my dad, big strong guy and yeah. i remember him telling me he's like the only movie that's really scared me was the exorcist i saw it in the theaters and i was i was done i was See, done after that and i was at a friend's house 
several years ago, and she was watching The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Mm-hmm. Now, that one kind of got me because it has like, um, this lady keeps waking up at the same time every mm-hmm. night. Once in a while, that happens to me. Yeah. So I automatically go back to that and think, oh, what what's going on in my life that's waking me <laughs> wake up at the same time every single night? But so... I, I can watch some of this stuff, but when it gets to be too much, then I got to turn it off. But like I said, I was kind of doing a couple things at once. But when yeah. it got real intense, when the when the um, priest finally showed up mm-hmm. towards the end and and like it was all breaking loose and hitting the fan and everything, like I was just kind of like my face was I couldn't take my eyes off the TV. I had to see it, it's very intense. but I wasn't yeah. scared. You know, as far as like, but it was still intense. For it you, was wasn't intense, it? Yeah. yeah. But I wasn't like. Like I would be, I mean, I've seen some episodes of the X Files made me not want to walk to the bathroom by myself. <laughs> this so mo- this movie was nominated for several Academy Awards. It won two: one for uh, best screenplay, and also uh, one for best sound. Uh, which obviously the sound is an, an element of of horror film, and I guess that was another element that made that movie very mm-hmm. scary. Um, it was nominated for Best Picture as well, uh, Best Actress with Ellen Burstyn, Best Supporting Role uh, for Jason Miller, and a few other ones. So this one is still very critically acclaimed. <laughs> well, and it made, um, like in the box office, 402, 402.7 to $441.3 million. Mm-hmm. So what that tells me is some people have seen it twice or everyone in the world has only seen it once. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. You know? I, I think it's still... The highest grossing horror film of all time. It only cost them $12 million to make it. That's crazy. So they come out ahead on that one. They sure did. And that's why we see all these Exorcist movies afterwards, because mm-hmm. they know it's a big money maker. And Stacey, you were telling me that this movie was released when? December 26th. <laughs> the day after Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Have some demons. <laughs> yeah. That's just a crazy time period, man. Crazy to release that film at that time. But uh, uh, Stacey... I love doing movie reviews with you, and it was very, very interesting doing this horror film with you for sure, man. <laughs> yeah, let's mark this one in the books because it may never happen again. <laughs> That's Stacy. I'm Chris. we got more reviews coming your way next right here on KWOC.